From Azeroth to Sephiroth, nerds are passionate about a lot of things, but there's one thing they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have returning champion Ifby Wadiwe. One win, baby! Yeah! <laughs> uh, we've got DC Pearson. How's it going? Woo! Woo! Uh, I've never been on the show before. At this excited. moment, I exist in a quantum state of both being the best ever and the worst possible. Ooh, a quantum state? That sounds sci-fi. <laughs> I'm just trying to present as a nerd yeah. when in actuality my dad invented football. <laughs> That's not true. And uh, next thing we have Emily Axford. Hey, Emily. Hey. Hey. How are you? <laughs> no one asked you how uh, you were yeah, feeling. You know, no one... That's the real, I'm just delaying it till we play because I'm nervous I'm going to fail. <laughs> uh, that's a good strategy. If, if, if I never ask any questions, you can't get any questions wrong. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Um, well, I'm afraid we'll have to move on. Um, <laughs> so we'll move on right to the questions. Or rather, uh, a brief explanation of the game, uh, if you haven't played before. This is Um Actually. I have here uh, a stack of false statements about the franchises that are nearest and dearest to your hearts. Uh, it's up to you to find the thing that's wrong with what I've stated, buzz in and correct me. There's only two rules. Your corrections must be preceded by the phrase, Um Actually, and you can interrupt me whenever you want. You don't have to wait for me to finish. So that's it. Are you guys ready to play? Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Question one concerns Super Mario Brothers. Bowser, Mario's first and greatest enemy, also known as King Koopa, has attempted to kidnap- Um, actually, Mario's first enemy was Donkey Kong throwing them barrels. That's correct. Uh <laughs> I knew that was a bad one. And I was like, were Mario and Luigi ever enemies? <laughs> yeah, I'd argue that Mario's first enemy was probably Luigi, because think about how much siblings fight when they're young. Yeah, that's true. But Mario desperately like disappointed when like when Mama Mario first brings home Luigi from the hospital. It's like I've got a surprise for you. I've got a surprise for you, Mario. It's your brother Luigi. It's like, oh fuck this. Yeah, and especially if your mom's name is Mama Mario and yeah. she's like, we're gonna name you Mario. Yeah. And then you were gonna name your brother Luigi. Yeah. Well they're naming him after Dad Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> Mama Mario and Dad Luigi. Their taxes are a nightmare. Over the IRS, they're just like, I can't get a handle on this family. <laughs> this question is about Game of Thrones. The Tears of Lys, a deadly poison hailing from the same free city as Varys, has been used throughout the show to kill characters both on screen, such as Marcella Lannister, and off screen, such as John Aaron of the Vale, hand of King Robert. If he um, actually, Marcella wasn't poison. It was uh, the the Joffrey kid who was poison. Marcella was poison. Yeah, oh, they poisoning cool. everybody they in that show. Everybody's <laughs> getting poisoned. It's a poison poisoning kind of town. I mean, that's, that's, that's it wears right. out its welcome. How many people yeah. were poisoned on the wire? Just those drive-by poisonings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Omar coming. And he wants you. He's got Omar a coming. he's got a spray bottle. <laughs> he's doing a, just a slow mercury poisoning. <laughs> Everyone dies real slow. Man from... got to have a code and some mercury. <laughs> um, DC. Um, actually, no one has ever been poisoned on the show because they're all already dead. Oh, I love it. Um, that sounds like a, an interesting fan theory, mm -hmm. but uh, they have, in fact, been poisoned. The poison used to kill Marcel Lannister was the long farewell, the poison that is administered with a kiss. See, I got that wrong because I read the books, and I didn't get to that book yet. Oh. It's one of those things you got Which wrong book? from reading too much. I'm already in the future. <laughs> they, they stopped using poison in the future. They all, they're, they're using spells now. There's a guy named Dumbledore in the show, too. Whoa, <laughs> someone slipped a different book in that jacket. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> Feast for crows, oh, oh, the winds of winter. The, the prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> yeah, that's right in there, right, right in there. Uh, question three is about Blade Runner. Ridley Scott's 1982 film Blade Runner, an adaptation of the Philip K. Dick novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, tells the story of Detective Rick Deckard's hunt for a group of fugitive replicants. While many elements and themes were added to the movie, such as Gaff's origami figures, others were lifted directly from the book, such as several of the Void Comp questions and Roy Batty's iconic line, all these moments will be lost in time, like tears in the rain. DC. Um, actually, that line isn't in the books. That was a thing from the A version of the script that uh, Rutger Hauer like 
it's said often that he improvised it, but he actually really like condensed it and possibly added the tear, gone like tears and rain part. That is more correct than what I even have on the card. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give you the point. When you get a low Blade Runner one across the plate, <laughs> you gotta go for it. I have to be honest, I was just gonna guess that the author was Isaac Asimov instead of <laughs> Ken Dick. It's all right, Emily, because this next question is about Dragon Ball Z. Okay, I, but I'm telling you, even if I like something, I'm not so good at That's it. That's all right. Also, Iffy is like raising his hand, like, I'm coming in. <laughs> I know, because he got my... two Dragon Ball Z podcasts. Oh, no! <laughs> I had a lot of Dragon Ball Z t-shirts. <laughs> I feel like ones? I was the rare Dragon Ball Z fan that was in it for the shirts. <laughs> but then I would watch the show and I would be like, it's pretty cool. I can't wait till they fight in seven weeks. I'm in it for Piccolo. <laughs> I'm, attra sure, yeah. I'm attracted to it's him. It's funny right? how I feel, like, you can say, like, Dragon Ball Z shirt, and there's so many people just like, I know exactly what shirt you're talking about. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. the, that weird time where it's like, you know what are two cool things? Dragon Ball Z and bowling shirts. Oh, yeah. right? it's just like, <laughs> it blew up so much. My friend, he would get the bootleg ones where it's not like Dragon Ball Z and just be a dragon. Dragon Orb X. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dragon Dad. Dragon Cube. <laughs> it was in the back part of Marshall's. I just wear it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Saiyans, a race of alien warriors to whom both Goku and Vegeta belong, are capable of transforming into blonde versions of themselves known as Super Saiyans, but only if they still have their tails, which contain the glands necessary um, actually, for... actually, they don't need their tails they need their tails to turn into uh, the giant gorillas, but it could chop off the tail and they could still go Super Saiyan. That is correct. You don't need the tail to become Super Saiyan. You need the tail to transform into your great ape form. Yeah. Um, um actually, Piccolo is a great, um, <laughs> is a great father figure to Gohan, and it makes me cry. I was like, even if I know the next one, I gotta give it to Emily, but like, I wouldn't have got but you that cannot one. let that stand. With branding, I can't let the Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> You're like, I have to snatch it every time. If you could have the next one, yeah. Emily, but the Dragon Ball Z one, for branding's sake, I have to snatch it every time. I also think though, it's like in basketball, like if you pass the ball to someone who doesn't know how to play basketball, it's just gonna hit him in the face. <laughs> anyway. So I think that's what we can look forward to if you leave one for me. Um, all right, we move on now to our very first shiny question. Question. Now, uh, shiny questions, just like shiny Pokemon, are basically the same thing. They are worth <laughs> the same amount of points. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. This is a game we call Spelling Bee. <laughs> spelling in English is hard enough, but spelling in sci-fi and fantasy is damn near impossible with extra apostrophes and consonants all over the place. Uh, I'm going to give you a word from a sci-fi or fantasy property, and I want you to spell it for me. Wait, uh, I could maybe things. win this one, because I don't have to know something, I just have to spell something. You just something. have to spell it. So uh, please say the word at the beginning and end of your spelling so I know when you're done. You're allowed to ask me what property it's from, uh, or to use it in a sentence. Okay. All right. Your word is... Kwisatz Haderach. I can say <laughs> it's from Dune. It is from Dune, yes. I'll give it a go. Cool. Okay. I'm not afraid, after all, fear is the mind killer. <laughs> Is that a Dune reference? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, really good. Quitsats Hatterack. K, uh, K W I Z A T Z H A D R A C H? No. I feel like I'm I fucked it up right at the I'm top. I'm sorry. There. No, no, you're not far off, but but that is incorrect. I'm sorry to say. Oh, I should have listened when you said <laughs> that. It's just by Q, I kind of tuned out. Wait, I'll give it a shot. Cool. What's it? Quits Quisatz Hatterack. Quisatz Hatterack? <laughs> Q, uh, W, E, E, T, S, A, C, H, A, D, D, E, R, A, R, C, Z, Q. Quisatz Hatterack. Markedly uh, less correct than DC, so. <laughs> so there's nowhere to go but up. All right. I remember reading uh, halfway through Dune uh, before stopping, and I'm gonna just close my eyes, try and see if I can get that page. Those words oh on the page. God. We sat cataract. <laughs> K. Right attack. <laughs> w. I. E. S. A. T. Apostrophe. T A T T R A H T. Quiz at Tataract. <laughs> that is incorrect. The correct spelling is K W I S A T Z H A D E R A C H. So it doesn't end in a Q. It does not end in Q. 
Okay, in fact, there's so no that's cues in the word at all. Where it went wrong. <laughs> that, that, that is the, yeah, if you hadn't have done that, I would have given you the point. But well. Quisatz's Deli does have the best pastrami on rye on the Jewish planet. <laughs> they, do they put just the right amount of spice on that? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, Ooh, hey, we we'll move on. Didn't even catch it. <laughs> Of course, we're not perfect and we make mistakes too. Here are some that you found. At Lawful Goodman says, Phoenix wouldn't say ad and tacidar as a phrase. Those two words are just two protoss names. He might say entaro adun or entaro tacidar, which means in honor of, or en arudin, which means in memory of. Love the show, smiley face. Well, I love you, Lawful Goodman. Thanks for correcting me on the proper way to speak protoss. At Joseph Viramont 8 says, I'm actually in your shiny question super sayings. It's spelled Ash Nas Gimbatul. That's correct. We should have spelled it Ash Nas Gimbatul. And from our exclusive dropout Discord, Mink says, Um, actually, the house Tully sigil is incorrect. It should be a trout on a red and blue background, not a solid blue one. That's correct. I'll see you on the Discord, Mink. This question is about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Infinity Stones have featured in multiple Marvel movies. At the time of this taping, the Time Stone resides in the Eye of Agamotto. The Space Stone is being kept safely in Asgard. The Reality Stone has been given to the Collector. The Mind Stone rests in Loki's staff. And the Power Stone is being held by the Nova Corps on Xandar. Emily, what do you got? Um, actually, the Time Stone is in Loki's staff, and the Rest Stone is in Asgard. <laughs> uh, that is incorrect, but I appreciate <laughs> I, appre I appreciate the <laughs> spirit <laughs> behind it, because the spirit is true. Ify. Um, actually... Oh, God, he's gonna nail it. The Mind Stone isn't in Loki's staff. That's correct. The Mind Stone is not in Loki's uh. staff. The Mind Stone is in Vision's forehead. The oh, Mind yeah. Stone oh. is Vision now. He's basically. using it to make yeah, yeah. paprikash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this question is about Lord of the Rings. Though most of Sauron's might as a leader is shown through his powerful magic or his terrifying armies, Sauron did have one servant who acted as his diplomat, herald, and emissary, the horrifying wraith known as the Mouth of Sauron. Um, act um, actually, he was the Hand of Sauron. No, he was the mouth. Motherfucker. <laughs> um, actually, he's not a wraith? That's correct. He wasn't a wraith. He was just a dude. He was just a guy. Just Bored a the... guy who just, just guy. got on board with pure evil? Yeah. <sighs> just happens every day, doesn't it? I know, right? Like, it really, really goes to show you. And the worst part about it, they give him a bit in the Emmys. <laughs> 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 when the mouth of Sauron came on to fucking Ugh. make fun of Sauron, I was like, you don't get no, to. No, no, you don't sorry. get it's to. Like, we haven't forgiven you yet, all right? It's like, <laughs> it's like you came out, you lied to our faces, you marched the armies of Mordor into the Shire. Like, yeah. you don't get to make jokes about this. Uh, this is about Star Wars. Rogue One, the first Star Wars film with no Jedi as primary characters, follows Jyn Erso and her companions as they deliver the plans for the Death Star to the Rebel Alliance, creating one of the most notable continuity errors in the Star Wars universe. As in the original trilogy, the discovery of these plans is credited by Mon Mothma to a group of Bothans, a species known throughout the galaxy as incredible spies. DC. Incorrect. No, I'm actually. <laughs> uh, the, yes, the, by the very nature. The Bothans uh, secured the plans for the Death Star in Return of the Jedi. That's correct. The Bothans sold plans for the Death Star 2, not uh, Death Star 1. So, uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, how you doing, Emily? Uh, not good. <laughs> not good. This is our second shiny question. This is a game called Tic Tac Tech. Now, in just a moment, you're going to see on the screen a collection of uh, technology from a specific property. I want you to identify the one that does not belong. The first person to identify it and buzz in will get the point. All right, let's throw that picture up here. Um, actually, these are all weapons from Final Fantasy VII. That's e correct. Except. Except. Uh, I think it's going to be that hair clip. That is incorrect. Uh, Emily. You have one fewer option. Um, actually, it's not the four-way spoke. Nope, that belongs there. Yeah. Um, actually, I'll just go ahead and guess the handgun. The handgun belongs too. Talk yeah. about things we ran out of ideas for. Yeah. <laughs> the one guy had handgun. I was like, I just watched the trailer for Spawn um, actually, today for some reason. I'm split between two because technically, if one I think is wrong, could be right, but it's like a very like roundabout way. So I'm gonna say brass knuckles. And if it's not that, it's the teeth. Yeah, the teeth do not belong. You definitely sort of forced your way through that question by guessing about five Multiple different things. Times. <laughs> Multiple. 
<laughs> you, yeah, it was basically like, it's like, all right, we've already ruled out three of them, so <laughs> hold on. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like no one should get a point for okay, that, yeah. but, but, uh... <laughs> yeah, no, go, go ahead, I think it's fair. No. Uh, I, you know, we, we got there eventually. I can get a point for it. You can get a point for it, do you want Thank a point? Thank you. We'll no, I point. don't, no, I don't, <laughs> give me a point. <laughs> Now, we're not perfect here either, and you may have noticed something that we got wrong. If you would like to correct us, you can tweet us at umactuallyshow. Remember, points are not worth anything. Let's move along. Yeah, please, I need some more questions. Let's just do a rapid round, see if I can get any. <laughs> this is about DC. Not DC, you, DC Comics. Right. Uh, that would be super unfair. Yeah, this is just about <laughs> DC Pearson. DC, when you were growing up... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> Was your Dragon Ball Z shirt XL or XXL? <laughs> um, okay. In Justice League Unlimited, Wonder Woman is turned into a pig by the sorceress Cersei, prompting Batman and Zatanna to strike a bargain with the Greek Enchantress. In order to have Diana transformed back, Batman has to beat Cersei in a series of riddles, each themed around a traumatic event in Batman's past. Okay, um, actually, it wasn't Batman, it was Wolverine. Uh, <laughs> you're so, I, you're, you're, you're just trying to piss off Ivy now. I, I thought you were gonna get this Hail Mary. Like, I was like, oh yeah, that that is like the thread that we can go with, and you just, Jump the shark. <laughs> Iffy. Um, actually, I'm a writer coattails and say it wasn't Batman, it was Superman? No, it was Batman. God. Um, actually, it wasn't riddles, it was word searches. Uh, he did word searches. <laughs> she had a kid's menu from a restaurant. <laughs> You're shockingly close. It, it, it wasn't a series of riddles. That... Wait, if I guess something, can I get it right? If, if no one else can tell me what Batman had to do instead of a series of riddles, I'll give it to you. Um, actually, was it a series of physical trials? It was not physical trials, no. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> um, actually, it wasn't riddles. It was. I don't have anything. I was gonna say <laughs> physical trials. Oh, um, actually, it wasn't riddles. It was word searches. Did I say that? You, yet? I think you already <laughs> said exactly that word for Points word. <laughs> Just really try to, I really want Batman to do word searches. <laughs> what would be more visually dynamic than mm -hmm. a superhero sitting down to do some word searches? Well, I'll tell you what might be more dynamic. He didn't have to solve riddles. He, Batman did, had to sing Am I Blue in a smoky jazz club. Really? Yeah, really. Oh my gosh, I was gonna, that was gonna be my joke answer. Not that exact one, but I was like, he, was, he had to sing. Sing, a singing it's, competition. Yeah. yeah, okay, uh, so we'll give that point to Emily for identifying that it is not a test of riddles. Okay. I do not deserve that point. Please take that point off of my board, okay? <laughs> I am a zero. I'm gonna be an honest zero rather than a fake one. I just have a code of honor, much like Batman. Yeah. Right, guys? You, you are. right, he has a code of honor, right? <laughs> this question is about Harry Potter. The Shrieking Shack, the most haunted building in all of Great Britain, is technically located in Hogsmeade, but is only accessible from Hogwarts through a secret tunnel located under the Whomping Willow. Um, actually, is it not the m most haunted building in Great Britain? Um... Because wasn't it just that they were, like, doing weird meetings there and stuff, actually, and people thought it was haunted? Uh, you're definitely, like, you're, adjacent. you're bushwhacking adjacent. your way down the right track. <laughs> yeah, the Shrieking Shack isn't really haunted. Um, there's a reason why people th thought it was Oh, because it's where the dude went to transform. That's correct. It is where the dude went to transform. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> I'll, that's close enough, I'll give you the point, yeah. So what we're going for here, the Shrieking Shack wasn't Lupin, haunted. Professor Lupin. It's where Remus Lupin would, uh, would transform into a werewolf, and so the, the sounds that people heard led people to believe that it was haunted. Not haunted at all. Wolf That's dog hilarious health. that people don't know what dogs sound like. For wizards to be like, we live in a school where here's here's our headless ghost who lives in our dorm, and there's Peeves the poltergeist. It's like, but don't go in that fucking house because there's ghosts <laughs> in there. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is going? What are you talking about? It makes no sense at all. Uh, this uh, brings us to our last shiny question of the game. Uh, there's a game called Power Up. The hunger for power may corrupt the souls of men, but hunger for power-ups is just plain fun! Give these characters the power-ups that will make them temporarily invincible. Can you hear me behind this board? <laughs> you can make me say anything right now. You can't you're, see my lips. You're like Wilson from Home Improvement. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> and begin. We've got five characters here, and Iffy is buzzing in. Uh, <laughs> What is with you? You're too good at this. What, what do you have there, Ify? Let, run, walk us uh, through Kirby it. Kirby has a super lollipop that gives him the... 
Pac-Man. <laughs> you got Pac-Man, the big circle that makes all the ghosts start blinking. And we all know the Super Mario star. Da, 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 da. I don't know if that's licensed and we can use it. <laughs> uh, Banjo-Kazooie, which I haven't played, but used the process of elimination. And you got a uh, good Crash Bandicoot with his uh, kind of racist thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is all 100% correct. That's a point for Iffy. <laughs> Isn't is everything these days? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, please. We are on to our last question of the game. Our score right now, 4-4-0. Four, four, oh, oh, tied how up. Is it 4-4-0? 4-4-0. Four, 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 I did not expect uh, to hang this tough with Iffy. Yeah, I wild. did not expect to have zero. But the amount of integrity <laughs> yeah, that you've did, accrued over the course of the game? It's true. I think I walked away I with think this might be points. like a Rocky story. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Where and it's like the moral win, victory is very yeah. strong. And you get to marry a woman that you works at a, a pet store. A fish store, right? A fish store, a fish, yeah. a fish store. We only sell fish here. <laughs> As always, our final question concerns real life skills. These are just uh, important skills to have for surviving in the real world. If you wanted to stop heavy bleeding, your best option is to apply a tourniquet a few inches above the wound and tighten it until the bleeding stops. Um, Iffy. actually, do you want to put the tourniquet on the wound, not above it, right? No, actually, when you're applying a tourniquet, you want to put it above, uh, above where oh, the wound is. But you want to apply pressure to the wound. When you're applying a, a tourniquet, you want to apply pressure closer to the heart. Um, actually, your best option is to go to a fucking hospital. That is technically correct. You should probably just get to a hospital. <laughs> if you can get to a hospital, if you're applying first aid. Um, actually, it's called a Band-Aid, not a tourniquet. Both your answers have actually been fairly close. <laughs> I'm inclined to give it to you. No, I won't take a point I don't deserve. <laughs> <laughs> your best option is not to apply a tourniquet. What should you do? Um, actually, your best option is to, um, ball up a sock and put it on top of the bleeding. That's close enough, yeah. You're, you're, I mean, probably not a sock, you probably want clean gauze. <laughs> uh, you specifically chose like the dirtiest cloth you could find. Uh, but yeah, your your best option in heavy bleeding is to apply gauze uh, and pads oh. and pressure to the wound. Oh, when you leave a tourniquet on long enough, it cuts off blood for so long that your limb can atrophy and fall off. Oh. So point of last resort, like a tourniquet might be the thing you need. But even then they say like to write the time that you apply the tourniquet on the person's forehead so that people like can look at them and clearly see that like that tourniquet has been on for this long and we know exactly like when to take this thing off. That is insane. Yeah. So don't apply a tourniquet as a first uh, as a line of first defense. But if you do, write on their forehead. Uh, you know, maybe draw some dicks while you're there. You <laughs> Just know, write like... a long note about everything you've done yeah. so far on that. <laughs> to whom it may concern. <laughs> uh, so uh, that is a point for Emily on our for real life skills, perhaps the most important question in the whole game. Four four tie between Iffy and DC this round. Wait. Hey, is there gonna be no tiebreaker? No tiebreaker, guys. This is like soccer rules, you know. Soccer, the, the most um actually. The most um. <laughs> this is messed up, though. We don't find out a winner between the two of them. There's we no winner people. in this game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that is our show. Thank you so much for joining us. Join us next time for more very nerdy pedantic corrections on um actually. That went about us exactly how I thought it was going to. <laughs> you didn't get zero. 